Hello guys, this is Prime Concepts. I want to explain the concept given by Gauss, which we know as Gauss law, right? So, and Gauss law will be applying this to electric, electrostatics or electric field. So, we want to look at Gauss law of electricity, electric field. And what does Gauss law say? Gauss law states that the net flux through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed within the surface. The net flux through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed within the surface. Let me write it. Through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed. So this is Gauss law. Now, what the law is actually saying, I'll try to illustrate this using a simple illustration that came to my mind. Now, I say, say we have a, a box, a big box that can contain, let's say, a good number of persons from two, three, four, five, up to ten persons. That box can contain this number of persons. And then they want you to identify how many persons are inside that box at a given time. Now, and when those persons are placed inside the box, the box will be closed such that you can no longer see them. So it means you cannot be sure about how many persons are there because you were not there when those persons were placed inside the box. Now, they want you to be able to do this. So they gave you hint. They said they will allow those people inside that box to clap their hands sequentially till everybody inside the box is done clapping their hands right just a sound clap now they will ask you to use the number of claps to identify how many persons are there so what it means so if you have that box and you hear three claps how many persons do you think are inside that box you're right three persons if you hear five claps how many persons do you think are inside that box you are right five persons that is exactly what Gauss is trying to describe with his law, saying that if you have some persons inside a box and you don't know how many persons are in that box, through the sound of clap that is coming out from that box, you can tell how many persons are inside that box. So relating this to Gauss law, if you have a charge trapped in a closed system, you don't know the value of that charge inside that box or that closed system. That's the easiest way for you to find out the value of that charge is to get the total flux that is coming out from it. So because the total flux coming out from it can always be known. So if you know the total flux coming out, you can now tell the value of the charge inside that box. So this is simply Gauss law. So no big thing about it, no ambiguity around it. So that is Gauss law. Now, what is the mathematical relationship? Gauss law simply says that the net flux, the net flux through an enclosed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed. So if you remove this proportionality sign, we're going to introduce a constant so that we'd say that our net flux is going to be the charge enclosed divided by epsilon so this is actually what we refer to as gauss law even though this is not the only form i'm still going to give you another form so but this is what we refer to as gauss law where q where this is the charge charge enclosed charge enclosed and epsilon naught of course it stands for permittivity of free space epsilon naught permittivity of free space is a constant that has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter. So this is the, these are the values of what you have, right? Now, one of the things you should know about Gauss law is that Gauss law is basically applied to surfaces that have symmetry or surfaces that are symmetric. So when you say symmetric, when you divide or split that surface into two, Whatever you have on this side, you get on this side. So if you check, an example of a symmetric surface is a spherical surface. So if you have a sphere like this, 
even though this looks like a circle but it's a sphere if i split this sphere into two equal parts everything i can find here i can find here so it means that a sphere is symmetrical so gauss law is usually applied to symmetrical surface also a cylinder is also a symmetrical surface and so many others a cone this um, symmetric surface and so many others right yeah so that is gauss law now i will just do a quick one for you help you see how we can prove or verify this formula that is gauss law so let's look at how to arrive at this formula in a simple way Now, if you recall from Coulomb's law of electrostatics, E, from Coulomb's law, E is equal to KQ. So, we're going to call this charge enclosed Q divided by R squared. And, of course, you know that K is a constant and K has a value of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So, this is K. So, if I replace this here, I would have that E is equal to what now? Charge enclosed divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, then R squared. So, a better way for me to write this out, simply write this as E equals charge enclosed divided by 4 pi R squared epsilon naught. So, I'll choose to write this like this. Now, if you look at this, you would clearly see that this 4 pi r square is actually the area of a sphere. So it means I can denote 4 pi r square with the symbol a, since it stands for area, and that is the area of a sphere. So what it means is that I would have e equals charge enclosed, right? Divided by area times epsilon naught. So I would have this. Now, what do I want to do? Let me call this, let me just say equation 1. So what will I do? I would multiply both sides of equation 1 by area, right? Or better still, without going that way, I will just bring this area to this point. So if I take A to this point, I will have E times A equals what now? Charge enclosed divided by what? Epsilon naught. Now, if you recall, E times A represents what? You are correct. E times A represents flux. So that we can now say that flux is equal to what now? Charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So we have been able to verify Gauss law, right? So this is what we said Gauss law is. That the net flux and, um, coming out through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed within that surface. I believe this is very clear. So the next, I'll be solving a simple problem here. And then in my next videos, I will be looking at the application of Gauss law. So let's take one example here before we move. So we have our first problem here. The question says, a 60 microcooler charge. So I would write it. The charge is 60. Micro means times 10 to the power minus 6. So don't forget. A 60 microcooler charge is at the center of a cube. The center of the cube. So a cube is a closed surface, right? So of a cube of side 10 cm. What is the total flux through the cube? We want to find the total flux through the cube, right? Now, they gave us the length or the side or the length of the cube, right? So the length of that cube, L, is 10 cm. Right now, but if you check, we want to find net flux through a cube that encloses a charge. The concept you can use to solve this is actually Gauss law. So, what it means is that you don't need the length. So, the net flux that is coming out through the, through the enclosed surface, according to Gauss, is independent of the length. So, it's just dependent on what the charge that is enclosed within the surface. So, it means that we have that phi. In this case, anyway, we don't need length. So we have that phi, according to Gauss, is charge, charge enclosed, divided by what? Permittivity of free space. So I would have that phi E is going to be 60 times 10 to the power minus 6 
divided by divided by okay epsilon now which is 8.85 times 10 to the power minus 12. So if I punch this very quickly, I would get 60 divided by 8.85. So which is 6.78. Then 12 minus 6 is 6 times 10 to the power 6 Newton, Newton meter square per coulomb. So this is our answer for the flux. Now I believe this is very clear. Please take notes. In this particular question, we don't need the length, right? The flux for this, we don't need to, the length to find it. Even though there are other questions, we would need area to find flux. So flux still depends on area anyway. So take note of that. Now, <clears throat> I want to also give, before I end this video, I want to give the other relationship you can find for Gauss law so that you don't get confused when you see it. If you recall, in our previous video, we mentioned when we studied electric flux, we mentioned the relationship, right, for electric flux when you have, um, when you have, and what is the name, non-uniform electric field. So you would have that the surface integral of E the A, which is flux, this is actually flux, right? Is equal to what? Charge enclosed divided by permittivity. So this is still a statement of Gauss law as much as this over this is a statement of Gauss law. So both of them are actually statements of what? Gauss law. And you should also take note as a bonus that Gauss law is the first Maxwell's equation. So Maxwell's equations are four equations, right? The first of the Maxwell's equation is what you know as Gauss law. So if you know Gauss law, it means you have learned the first Maxwell's equation. Thanks for watching. In my next video, I'll solve more examples on that. Thank you. Remember, this is Prime Concept.